Last October, I released a Remedy Explained video entitled The Confrontation of the Shadow. Ever since then, I've received requests for me to pick up and play a game that takes this idea and puts it front and center. Persona is a series I've been aware of but never took the time to experience. With an average playtime of over 75 hours, I honestly did not think it was a game I would have time to pick up. Generally, I shy away from games with long playtimes due to my busy schedule. However, Persona came too highly recommended by this community for me to ignore any longer. Last month, I downloaded Persona 4 Golden and spent a Saturday morning playing the first three hours or so. This was all it took to get me interested in what this game had to offer. Between the overt allusions to the Jungian psychology, tarot, mythology, and a character-driven narrative structure, the few hours I played hooked me. This video is intended to touch upon a few major topics that I noticed and express my first impressions of the game. As mentioned earlier, I have only played the first few hours. Any information learned after Yosuke's trial will not be included as I haven't played that far. With that said, let's get into it. Persona 4 opens in the back of a limousine with an impish looking man named Igor. He proceeds to discuss the protagonist's destiny and performs a tarot spread. The first card turned is Key 16 of the Major Arcana, the Blasted Tower. Igor's explanation is that this means a terrible catastrophe is around the corner. Based upon the modern definition of the word, this is not entirely accurate. The association of catastrophe with sudden disaster only entered into the English lexicon in the 18th century. Before that, it had a different connotation. Rather than disaster, it is better described as a surprise or an unexpected change. Something that comes along to disrupt one's living situation or way of thinking. In Yu's story, we see this multiple times. His parents leaving to work abroad cause him to transfer schools and is certainly a sudden change, but not terrible. The deaths of Yamano and Saki, however, are terrible events that spark sudden changes in our characters. The next is the Moon card. Hesitation and mystery are the given interpretations by Igor. While this is accurate for interpretation, there is a lot more going on if you look at the symbolism. While sometimes seen as a negative card, its negativity is only what we project onto it. The symbol of the moon itself, among other things, represents the unconscious mind and contains within it the fears and anxieties that lie under the water surface. One lesson learned is that by submerging into it, one may uncover the root of these anxieties and release them. For this reason, it relates to the individual's confrontation with the shadow self. This is not the only time the game alludes to this dynamic before entering the fog world. On the first day of school, Chie becomes angry with Yosuke when he accidentally broke her DVD, a kung fu film entitled Trial of the Dragon. Commonly used in the hero myth, this expression is used to describe the hero's battle with their inner demons or dragon. The hero, however, is not always successful. Many are too frightened to even enter the dragon's cave for fear of its power. However, the dragon guards a hoard of gold, a temptation for those bold enough to enter. Joseph Campbell stated that the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. Upon entering the dragon's cave, the hero finds skeletons of those who came before, but were unable to overcome the danger. According to Carl Jung, only one who has risked the fight with the dragon and is not overcome by it wins the hoard, the treasure hard to attain. This trial of the dragon appears to be the basis for the events seen within the game. Inside the fog world, Yosuke is confronted by his shadow self. Insecurities, fears, traumas, aspects of oneself that we reject, all of it is brought to the surface. While standing in a twisted version of the Konishi's family store, he is standing inside the dragon's cave. At this point, a process called the individuation of the shadow begins. Only by recognizing aspects of ourselves we would rather not face and incorporating them into our conscious mind can we become whole. First, one must subdue the dragon, bring the dark side of ourselves under conscious control. The boss battle with Yosuke's shadow shows this. 
After accomplishing this, he has one final temptation to avoid. That is, suppressing the shadow and tossing it back under the water's surface and preventing it from coming back up. As shown in the story, rejecting it further would cause the beast to grow stronger and lash out. Young once said, mere suppression of the shadow is as little a remedy as beheading would be for a headache. It is shown that suppression within the fog world can be dangerous. As stated earlier, I have only played a few hours in, so this next bit is only a theory. If I am incorrect here, please do not correct me. I will find out soon enough. Up to this point, we have come across two unique rooms, each related to the deaths witnessed so far. One for Saki Konishi, and the other for Mayuki Yamano. These rooms are physical representations of their personal dragon cave. Saki being confronted by the disappointment her family felt about her and her general hidden dislike for Yosuke. For her, the cave shifted into a twisted version of her parents' liquor store. Mayuki, a woman who had an affair with a government official, involved a bedroom with posters on the wall. These posters were of the man's wife, and by the time the team arrived, they had been shredded. Based upon the evidence so far, it appears that both of them were unable to survive their trial of the dragon. While Yosuke was successful and accepted his dark half, Saki and Mayuki did not. In Mayuki's case, it appears she experienced what is called shadow projection. During the individuation process, one may learn that they possess negative qualities that leads them to hate themselves. For Mayuki, rather than accept this about herself, she turned that hatred outwards and shredded images of Mizuzu Huragi, the man's wife. When one cannot accept negative aspects of themselves, they sometimes project those qualities onto others. I'm not the bad one here, she is. By failing their trials, both women died for real. Yosuke, however, was successful and attained the dragon's gold. With the individuation complete, his persona Jiraiya was awakened. Much like Yu's persona Izanagi, it appears as the embodiment of his dark self, but under his conscious control. Both of these figures are taken from folklore and Shinto mythology. Izanagi being a god of creation who along with his wife Izanami formed the solid land. Gifted to spear by other gods, they stood on a bridge floating over the earth, which at that time was only a formless ocean. After dipping the spear into the water, the droplets that fell from the blade formed into the first solid land. Yosuke's persona is named for the protagonist of a story called The Tales of Jiraiya the Gallant. In one part of the story, Jiraiya encounters an old sage on a mountain. After gaining his favor, the sage reveals himself to be a toad spirit and teaches him toad magic. It is no surprise that during this fight, Yosuke's shadow takes the form of a giant frog. This entire process is detailed on the moon card that Igor read in the Velvet Room. The deck used within Persona brings attention to a crawfish at the top, often associated with the feminine energies of the moon such as intuition. In the Rider Weight deck, we see the crawfish crawling out of the waters of the unconscious and approach two figures. A dog and a wolf stand on either side of the path. It is important to remember that dogs are simply domesticated wolves. This shows that we all contain a civilized or domesticated version of ourselves, but at the same time, the wild and ferocious aspect is there as well. From what I have seen, the story of Persona 4 has characters who only exhibit the aspect of the dog into their conscious personality. The confrontation of their shadow forces them to reawaken their inner wolf. By doing so, they may continue safely down the path. This road leads onwards to the rising sun. The success after a trial, or in other words, the dragon's gold. So far we have seen Yosuke go through this experience. As other primary characters, I fully expect to see both Chie and Yukiko go into the dragon's cave as well. What will their experiences be though? Based upon information I have at hand, I can make an educated guess. Chie comes off as a loud extrovert, always in other people's business and stirring up some drama. From my experience, individuals who behave in this matter are attempting to mask something on the inside. 
by focusing outside of themselves, they never have to look inward. Yukiko has had the least screen time, but the impression I get is that she has been raised to take over the Amagi Inn from a young age. As a result, her own desires would have been stamped out by the family. When a child is raised to receive praise and affection for doing one thing and neglect for doing another, they repress aspects of themselves. Over time, this becomes an unconscious instinct designed to ensure they are not neglected or punished any further. I will have to wait and see if my first impressions of these characters are accurate. I wanted to take the time to thank everyone who recommended this series to me. Ever since I got my first taste of it last month, I have been eager to get back and see where the story goes from here. If anyone would like me to make more videos like this on Persona 4 or other games that you enjoy, please let me know and I will do my best to accommodate. I'll see you all next time. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like as it really does help out the channel. If you would like updates on new uploads, feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter. Have a good day and peace be with you all.